hello everyone you're welcome back to my youtube channel my name is bridget adaze if this is the first time you're seeing this pretty face please don't make it your last by clicking the subscribe button you can subscribe and turn on your post notifications so that you get notified each time i post a new video on my channel i do reviews on book i share i share snippets of things i learned from books because i like to read so if you are interested in this kind of content please please and please subscribe to my channel we have you have more to gain than lose by subscribing so do well to subscribe so today i'll be talking about how we can find our purpose in life this topic is inspired by a book i read titled the monk who sold his ferrari it's quite an interesting read by robin sherman so that's why i'm doing this video today so i can at least share with you guys because the book helped me a lot it changed my mindset and i mean it would be nice for me to share with you guys so without further ado let's jump right into it but before i go on i would I, I i want to share you know a little story about my growing up you know growing up as a child i could remember when i was much younger as a very little girl before i even started school i could remember my peers my age mate, the people around me then they got into school before myself i i could remember seeing them going to school every morning and i'll be like mom where are these people going to where are they going to and my mom will be like they are going to school and all of that and i'll be, ask her mom why am i not going to school yet she'll be like don't worry you go to school but not now i got to find out later on in life that <laughs> it was due to financial constraints anyway that's why i wasn't you know enrolled into school as that when my mates were going into school so that's built a lot of curiosity that seeing them go to school built a lot of curiosity in me about schooling so i developed interest in going to school i really wanted to go to school every morning i would meet my mom and tell her mom when am i starting school when am i going to school i want to go to school i want to go to school so eventually i got enrolled in school and like every other person who has very high interest about school it, it became an advantage for me because that made that opened my mind to everything that they are doing in school if there's anything that they are teaching or anything i would always you know i was excited about school generally so i was open-minded and i learned very fast i learned everything i was taught and i became a very very you know good chap in my class i always top my class amongst others you know i became a very good student in school and all of that so as time progressed i think there was a time in my primary education i was in primary six or so when it our class teacher then asked everybody in class what they would like to become in future so she was just asking us randomly so when she she kept asking 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 we got one very intelligent boy as well in my class his name is uchina when he got to uchina's dorm Uchina said that she wanted to be a footballer. My teacher was <laughs> was in shock. The woman was was pissed because Uchina was a young chap, very intelligent. The future what looked bright for his kind of intelligence and all of that. He wasn't expecting that to come from him. He was she was pissed. In fact, she took duster, rub it on his face. I'm like, how why would you want to become a doctor with all this your intelligence? You want to use it to be playing football and all of that. So <laughs> everybody started laughing and all of that. So eventually when it got to my turn <laughs> to say I actually deep down in my heart I wanted to be a teacher but because of what she did to that boy in fact i just you know respected myself in order to save myself the embarrassment and to save myself the stress of you know being rubbed duster on my face i gingerly 
told her that I wanted to be a doctor and she was very happy the whole class clapped everybody went of course I was an A student I was a bright student in school so everybody wanted expected that you know if you are good you do science based course why am I saying this I think there's a problem with our society and believe me the problem is not unemployment the problem is not bad rules the problem is not education the problem is having a fixed mindset as a society we have a fixed mindset and that mindset we need to shift from having a fixed mindset to having a growth mindset what do i mean by that a fixed mindset is why all of us wants to be a doctor everybody wants to be a lawyer a fixed mindset is why an average african parent wants their child to either study medicine engineering or one of those reputable science courses whereas who are those that are going to make our shoes who are those that are going to make our hairs who are those people that are going to clean up our environment we need to appreciate we need to come down from that high us and start looking at things differently if we want to grow as a community with the right kind of education and of course with the growth mindset the world will be a better place for us to live in it took me years of research and adults reading of books on psychology emotional intelligence biography and autobiographies of great people for me to come to the discovery for me to realize what it is that we all as individuals need to be doing what we what we really need to be doing in life what will matter at the end of the day when time is passed and we are lying on our deathbed what will really count so it took me a lot for me to you know really discover what it is that is most important and for us to you know not just work because you know we need to work to put food on the table but to work purposefully so let me go back to this book i told you guys about the monk who sold his ferrari this book is about a story of a renowned lawyer who has achieved all there is to achieve in his career as a lawyer he has done so well for himself he has attained every everything there is to achieve really both financially status wise everything degree wise popularity he has even grown to fame in his career but he still was not satisfied somewhere in his heart of heart he felt like there's something that he needs to do he needed he wanted more he was not fulfilled yes that's the right word he wasn't he still wasn't fulfilled despite being a success in his career so he set out to the himalayas to you know he heard about some monks who lived there and all of that so he set out to the himalayas to find them and you know find out what really makes them happy because a whole lot has been said about those monks how they heal how they how they live happily how they are the happiest people in the world and all of that so he was like what is it about these people these people they are living in the bush and they are living away from civilization so what could it be that is really making them happy so he set out went up to the mountains of the himalayas and eventually he found them so when he found them some of the things that he learned from these monks the way they live their lives and all of that as he wrote in the book you know the monks they were living intentionally they were intentional about everything everything they do in their life 
they live it they live their life intentionally this permits me to you know look this way my daughter is somewhere here <laughs> yeah so the monks they practice the ritual of solitude or simply put um mandatory period of silence that is no matter the craziness of the activity of the day they must have a quiet time for themselves a quiet time where they just recollect meditate and you know have some peace and tranquility within themselves and not just that they practice the ritual of physicality that is they take care of their body like as in taking care of yourself self-care is a, is a good practice that we all should embrace and also the ritual of nourishment for even something as we take common as food eating they take it seriously we are what we eat like we need to eat right we need to eat healthy there are a lot of you know chemicals in what we eat today that don't take full caution or full consideration into it but you know these monks they are very detailed and what they eat is as important as who they are so they take they observe due diligence when it comes to their food and also they practice the ritual of abundant knowledge i mean they read a lot a lot like read read regularly and not just about reading it's not enough to read apply some of the things that you learn from books to yourself practice them there's something that reading does for me i i don't know i enjoy reading i don't i've said that a lot on this <laughs> on this channel i enjoy reading because it gives me some level of confidence even when i don't you know even when i'm financially not stable i feel i still feel good knowing fully well that there are some things that I know. Reading helps you. It builds your mind. It, it changes your perception to things. So it has really, really been helpful. And him being a renowned lawyer, by the lives of this month, got to know it again for the first time. Of course, he has been reading. He has is well read. But, <laughs> you know... Seeing the way these people read with intent and with the right disposal and all of that helps change him. So it's not enough to read. You have to read the right books, read books that, you know, recommended books that would be of help. So you, we don't just read wild and not have the all the, you know, nourishment as you're supposed to have from books. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I know you know what I'm talking about. And also they practice the red ritual of radiant living. Waking up early is, is very, very important. And those monks, when they wake up in the morning, first thing that they do, they don't, you know, they just keep to themselves and try to catch um, a glimpse, a hold, of themselves you know it is when you are full it is when you are whole that's when you can give out so they try as much as they can to catch a hold of themselves before going out to meet people the world has a lot of energy and the energy you put out somehow some way comes back to you so you need to have the right form of positive energy before you know trying to meet people and one very important ritual that i particularly like about this monk uh, is the ritual of spoken words like this is so important you guys it's so so important like consciously repeating mantras to yourself that i am great i'm gonna be great i can do this i am 
speak positivity positivity into your existence like this is so so important and that's one of the very very important things that the monks do they do it randomly during the day they can just be going and you know they will encounter challenge or anything at all then they'll just speak positive positivity into it and eventually it comes to you know fruition it comes to reality so another ritual is the ritual of simplicity they live a very very simple life very very simple because at the end of the day i mean at the end of the day why are we <laughs> struggling for all these things even when we have 20 houses you can only sleep under one room even when we have all the cats we can only sit on one car it's just one car that can actually take us to our destination. Even when we have so many shoes, we can only wear one pair at a time. So why not? Why not be simple? Why not? Why not be simple? So all these things contribute to you know what really makes those monks happy. And the man was the lawyer was fulfilled finding out that. Happiness is not in what we have. Happiness is not in what we hope to have. Cause sometimes we say we say to ourselves that I'm going to be happy when I when I have my master's degree. I'm going to be happy when I have my PhD. I'm going to be happy when I have my own house and my own cars and all the luxuries of life. And when we eventually have it, we we, we will not start looking at okay. I have this okay okay so where is the happiness so happiness is not in the destination happiness is in the process we have to <laughs> it's funny it as simple as this sounds not everybody is aware of it and not everybody has come to the realization that we need to consciously make effort to enjoy the process of our lives like every phase that comes with its own challenges and with its own glories we have to make efforts to enjoy it and be happy happiness is a choice that we have to make daily we have to choose to be happy yes so that's one very very important lesson i learned from that book and in finding purpose Here's what I have to say. When all is said and done, no matter what it is that we have achieved in this life, the quality of our lives will be determined by the quality of our contribution. No matter how small or big the contribution is, we will be remembered for the impact, the slightest of things that we've made you know no matter how small it is even if what you are doing is you 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 make shoes for a living people will remember how wearing your shoes made them feel the quality and the positive energy you put into making that shoes with the user in mind is what will really make the difference i don't know if that makes sense so we're not all going to be doing the same thing but if we are doing what we are doing with the user in mind and we're giving it the right energy the right dedication that is at the end of the day what will really count even when nobody is acknowledging what we're doing nobody's clapping for us or nobody is saying kudos to you is what will really give us satisfaction but that is it for this video i found this book very very insightful i found it very very helpful and i learned a whole lot this is one of the books one of those books that you read and after reading it you feel like really 
So what have I been doing all my life? What have I been doing with my life? You know, you just calm down. You just leave that struggle. You just leave that um, jumping up and down that you're doing. I'm not saying that you should just stop everything that you're doing and, you know, start, you know, living gently and all of that. No, you, you, you have a change of mindset. Even in doing what you are doing, you look at things differently. So that's it for this video. Please give this video a thumbs up. If you found it very useful, please don't be stingy with it. Be generous. It's the least you could do for your friend or your neighbor or your the people on your timeline. So do well and feel free to share it with everybody. Share it with your friends or family and also subscribe if you want more of this kind of content from me i hope to see you guys in my next video bye for now